yeah, what is it like knowing you guys are going to play in June? Well, it's great. I mean, that's our goal every year. Uh, when, when I was at Dixie, that was kind of a, a staple. We plan on playing in June every single year. And here it's, you know, the, our number one goal starting the season was to win our league. Uh, we did that last week, and then it's to win a regional. And so our, our goals are attainable right now, but it's a great feeling. It feels like summer camp right now, but we have our own team. Was this kind of the goal coming in here? I mean, it's, I was kind of amazed to see that it hadn't made the regional since 2002 with the long tradition. Is that the, yeah. the goal you took over? Def definitely our goal. I mean, we want to. our goal as a program is to put a regional quality team on the field year in and year out. Uh, we feel like we've done that the last three years, but it's, it's really tough to make a regional, especially in the West Coast Conference. This year, uh, nobody got an uh, at-large bid, which was a little bit disappointing because as a conference, we feel like uh, we had at least two, probably three teams, uh, Gonzaga, LMU, that deserve to be in there. So it's tough. I mean, you have to win games, win them at the right time, and beat good teams. So, yeah, super proud of these guys for what they've accomplished. With the way last year went, and I know you guys thought you were a regional team last year and it just didn't happen, did it make it even more sweet this year because of last year? Well, last year we felt like we were a regional team, but we knew that we weren't playing well at the right time, didn't win the right games uh, at the end with the injuries. But um, this year it would have been a big time disappointment because we were fully healthy. Uh, we were playing pretty well until Gonzaga. And uh, fortunately, Bronson Larson hit that home run against St. Against Mary's to give our team that confidence we had the previous 30 games. How about How that looks? winning four games in two days? I mean, that's almost oh, yeah. unheard of. The four games in probably, what, 40 hours? It was absolutely incredible. And it's not the way you choose to do it, but looking back, it was really gratifying to be able to do it that way. And especially uh, what Gonzaga did to us last week uh, to be able to, to come in and sweep those guys. 10-3, 16-3, that was pretty sweet. How did you guys turn that around after that sweep and then the way you took it to them on Saturday? I, I don't know, but as soon as I find out, I'm going to try to write a book and then I can retire from coaching and do something else. But, uh, I, you know, it's just kind of, as a, as a head coach, you get a, a pulse of the, your, what the team's feeling like. And it just didn't feel good at Gonzaga and, and at LMU. And we were kind of anxious and uptight. And when Bronson hit that home run, it was literally like, like the switch just was flipped on. And... Uh, the next guy got a hit, and the next guy got a hit. And, you know, hitting is contagious, just like free throw shooting or putting or whatever you want to talk about in athletics. And that's what happened to us. We were just free and easy after that moment. It's obviously been the strength of the team scoring runs, one top ten in the nation. Now, how tough is it going to be against the pitching at Fullerton yeah. and Stanford? Well, I tell you what, they, they have great pitching, not just good pitching, but great pitching. They pound the zone. I mean, guys with 110 innings and 15 walks. I mean, so, yeah, we have our work cut out. Uh, and, you know, the, the old adage in baseball is good pitching beats good hitting. Uh, we're going to have to execute, um, we're going to have to play great defense, and we're going to have to pitch it ourselves. Would you say your team's playing, I mean, can you bottle that up and take it to Stanford? Do you feel confident about how your team is rolling right now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's not, you know, it wasn't kind of a, an anomaly or a fluke the way we played Friday and Saturday. I, I'd say it was more of a fluke the way we played to finish the Gonzaga series uh, at the end of the regular season and LMU. And so this is really our team. I mean, we're not going to score 10 and 16 runs, but uh, we'll be competitive uh, one through nine. We'll play good defense. We'll pitch it OK. And uh, we'll have a chance. But but the big thing is our team is mentally tough, and, and they believe they can win. And that's, you know, in athletics, that's what it's all about. None of these guys have been in this situation mm -mm. before. How do you kind of keep them level-headed and you know, not get uh, too intimidated? Yeah, the you know, we talked about that. And I just gave him a couple of my experiences. Actually, as an NCAA referee, uh, you know, when I went my first Sweet 16 as a referee, it was like, man, what, what is this? Uh, felt like you were on a, on a just on a stage all alone. And then same thing with, uh, with the Elite Eight. Uh, they just have to not let that noise uh, that, that are all distractions. It's still 90 feet, still 60 feet, six inches, and um, you know it's still baseball. And so I think they're they're mature guys, they're old guys. That they're, I don't think they're going to be in awe uh, one bit. You told me a couple of weeks ago that that one of the things you want for this program is for the guys who've been in it to be able to mentor the guys who are coming up in it. How have your seniors or your upperclassmen um, handled that role heading into this? Oh. Uh, Tremendous, uh, you know, Tanner Chauncey's been been a leader all the way through, and he's battled some injuries. But I kind of looked at what he's done and Bronson Larson's done, um, leading us both on the field and off the field. That's what you need in a program. You need your older guys to mentor, um, you know, kind of be a big brother of those young guys. And Hayden Nielsen, who's who was our shortstop for four years, is now our one of our coaches. He did the same thing, and so hopefully, it's perpetual and it just keeps building and building upon itself. Uh, don't get me wrong, we're we're happy with where we're at, but. We're not where we want to be as a program yet. We want more pitching depth. We want more depth uh, uh, on the hitting side as well. Um, so we're still we're still working, but it's imperative that those older guys teach those young guys what to do and how you know just how to, how to go about their business every day.
you and your staff had a vision up, I'm sure, when you first took over the program <laughs> to get them to this this spot. What did you what have you done? What, what have you done that's been specific to what you wanted to accomplish? Well, a couple of our goals when I interviewed with uh, Tom and Brian uh, was Tom, in fact Tom made the comment. Coach Holmo made the comment. I want you to do two things: beat San Diego, and uh, we have one game on ESPN. Be on that, and so we did that the last two years. We were on ESPN, and and when I told him I thought we could get to a regional in five years, that was one of the, one of the things I had uh, down on the set of goals in the packet I turned in, and so um, you know check that off. But we again, we're not totally where we want to be. Um, it's tough to win four games in in 40 hours, and and so you can kind of say it was virtually impossible, um, which Spencer Linton try, keeps saying, but. Uh, so we want to get ourselves in a situation where no matter what, we're playing so well throughout the season that we're in the conversation for an at-large bid every single year and not we have to go win the tournament to get in. Love to be in that situation, but what do you make of all that national talk about not playing on Sunday and having to extend it till Monday? Well, I'm glad that, I'm glad that we're in the conversation. I'm glad that that conversation's being, being had because if, if, uh, if we're out, nobody cares. Nobody talks about that Sunday play. So. I like it, uh, you know, and it's not just a BYU rule. It's an NCAA rule for, for any institution that doesn't play on Sundays. They'll make accommodations. And so uh, although we hate to mess up everybody else's pitching, pitching rotations and different things, we're sure happy to be there. Cool. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks.